Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. Sorry, um, the baby is going to be in my intro with me just because he is a little bit crabby today. Um, but yes, um, let's go ahead and jump into the video. I do want to, um, this is going to be the part two of how to do or a gel ombre. So with this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how you guys are able to achieve it, especially if you guys are using gels that have that dispersion layer. Um, if you guys don't know what a dispersion layer is, if you guys are new to nails, what a dispersion layer is, is once you cure the nail, it almost feels like the polish is still wet. Like it feels like if it feels like it has like a, a sticky layer to it. So that's what a dispersion layer is. And I do find with the nail or gels that have a dispersion layer, I do feel like it makes it a lot harder to blend. So I'm going to show you guys my method and the way I do it because I do have some dispersion gels. If you guys have seen in my last video, that video is um, how to do gel ombres with out the dispersion layer so those gels they do not have a dispersion layer but the gels that I'm going to be using today they do have a dispersion layer so um the way I'm going to show you guys I'm going to show you guys a couple different ways so just make sure you stay tuned for that and if, if it helps you guys make sure to grab a notepad and jot down some notes so then once you go and apply it again then or when you use it on your clients you guys could kind of refer back to the notes just because sometimes I know like you forget things in the video and stuff just because there's be there would be times I rewatch a video and I'll rewatch it like about three times and then that's where I find new things every time so um yeah if you guys even need to refer back to this video you know by all means um that's what I would sometimes have to do in all these videos I am going to be showing you guys all of the methods so then you guys could see which ones you guys want to pick all right so let's go ahead and jump into the video hello you guys welcome back to my channel so today i'm going to be doing the ombre nails i want to show you guys um the ones from my last video just so you guys could see that if you guys want to check that out you guys are more than welcome to this is what they look like sorry the lighting is a little bit different my my stand for my lighting it clamps onto my desk and it completely broke so i've been trying to look online if you guys know where i could get one of these let me know if i end up finding it, i'll make sure to link it down below but um, yeah, so it ended up breaking. It attaches in this hole and it just clamps onto the side of the desk, but it just ended up taking a poop on me, but yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and mix up my gels. When you are doing this, it's really important to make sure you mix them up. So I know this color is a little bit different than this one because this one it is a, a pink, a pinky kind of color. Um, so and this one's like kind of more of a nude, but I do still want to show you guys how I do this So I ended up prepping my nail already and so what I'm gonna do is I am going to Put a layer on Okay, and so I know some of you guys in the last video were telling me to do this half and half. So I'm going to show you guys um, this. And I'm going to show you guys how the way I like to do it. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Both of these are OPIs. They both have dispersion layers. So with that being said, it does have that sticky layer in between. You want to make sure that you guys mix these up really good. Just because I find that they end up like separating and you guys could kind of see it. Sorry about that. My phone is going off. But, and you don't want it to be like that. So, okay. So what I'm going to do is get a sponge. And if you guys watch the video, you guys will already know that these are the sponges that I use. I get them from the dollar store. They come all stuck together like this, which is perfect for storing. Um, so it's just not all scattered. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing with this is I am actually going to cut it. 
And so I'm going to cut it like that. I'm going to cut this side as well. And I'm going to take off any harsh edges. Okay, reason for this is because I want it on I want this part to be the only part that touches product. I don't want anything else. You guys can get that little, um, the little brush that, let me go ahead and pull it up so you guys know what I'm talking about. You guys can get these and they are only a dollar, which the handle is super pretty. It looks really, really nice. Um, but I just always have these on hand, so that is why I use these. But you guys could cut them and do that. So... I'm just going to go ahead and blend it. It does take a lot of the product off, but you guys could go ahead and put it in the light. Okay, so that's going to cure for 30 seconds. And even if you guys wanted to, you guys could just paint on right here. And do it like that. Um, okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and dab it some more. All right, and then we'll put it in the light. So I know people were saying that this is the method that they use, and I wanted to show it to you guys just because with me. Um, and having to do it with the the nails and whatnot, I don't feel like this actually works for me at all. Um, so I'm going to show you guys all the different ways people always tell me to do it this way, do it that way, do it this way. And so honestly, like I do feel like some ways they do work, but it takes time to achieve that look. Um, and I kind of want to show you guys like the quickest way just because I know at the end of the day you guys are working on clients. You guys have more um, clients that you need to take care of and stuff so you guys need to be focused on that. But I forgot to put the time but right now we are at 6 minutes in. I'll go ahead and tell you guys what the time is once um, we are finished with this. And I'm just going to keep on dabbing. And it does blend. It does take a long, long time. And I know what some people, they say that the... A question that I had is every time that they dab, the polish just comes right off. And I completely agree. I do feel like that's what happened in the first part. Is that it did end up coming off. Um, what I'm going to do for you guys is after I am done with all these parts, because I, I want to show you guys what is easy, especially because I don't want you guys to have to buy all this stuff and then it not work for you or just to waste your time to try it on a client and then you guys end up messing it up. So you see, there's not really a blend. So I'm going to go ahead and try another method somebody had told me. I don't really like using sponges with this gel because I don't know if you guys can see this, but it had bubbled up so much. You guys could see it even under the paint, trying to go back over it. And I know with using um, a gel brush, you might be able to like blend it out. But honestly, with this technique, I or the technique that I was first showing you, it, I don't think that it is even going to go anywhere. So, with that being said, I do want to show you guys a different method um, and see if this is what is going to be working for you guys. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put rubbing alcohol in here. Okay, I have my towel off to the side, so if you guys see me going over there, I am the only thing that I am doing is I'm just rubbing it back and forth. And I'm going to be using my fan brush. Okay, so I do feel like this blending technique, it works a lot better with gels that they do have the dispersion layer. 
just because if you guys had seen my last video of how they came out in the other one, oh my goodness. They, honestly, I didn't like them at all because of the fact of it looks so streaky. Um, so I went ahead and cleaned my brush. I like to clean it in between. Um, I feel like for myself it does help a lot and it's nice because the brush it isn't so straight across so you do have that little bit of area where it just touches the nail unless you apply more pressure then you will get it you'll touch all of it but you see it only touches the center it doesn't touch the ends okay and so this is what it's looking like we're gonna go ahead and go in again and I do feel like this way it's great because you don't get the bubbles like how you were because with the sponge it did have bubbles I do notice with the no wipe top coat or the no wipe gels from Tracy's nails I do notice that I don't really have a problem with bubbles when doing the ombre nails I know you guys hear me talk about Tracy's nails a lot in my videos, but honestly, all of her stuff is so amazing. Like, I don't get sponsored. I wish I did just because that's how much I do love their products. Um, and I will tell you over and over and over that, like, her stuff is, it's worth it. Sorry, there was a little hair in there, so I wanted to get it out. So I'm just rubbing my brush over here, and then after I'm going to go back. And then after I'm just going to be scooting a little bit more down. Okay, and so, and even in between things, you might want to even just kind of let it settle. So, I find that letting it settle it kind of helps it blend a little bit more. Let me go ahead and show you guys up close. You guys could still see streaks in it. So, I mean, I think this is something that it will take you some time to learn. But so far, I do feel like... Using the brush technique, you are able to get away with it more with um, the gels that have a dispersion layer just because it helps kind of like spread out and blend. The one with the tacky or with no dispersion layer, I do notice that you do need to make sure that you, you blend it really, really well just because these are kind of more like a polish. This is from the last video. If you guys have seen that, you guys will know what I'm talking about. But it does have streakiness. I mean, I do feel like if you work and work and work and work with it. If you guys seen my video, I was working a lot with it. And there was even parts where I kind of skipped a little bit just because of the fact that I felt like I was getting nowhere in the blending. And I do um, blend from side to side. I don't, I do just a little bit of that just to try to see about that. But even that, it wasn't going anywhere for me. Okay, and you guys could see the blend on that. It's looking good. Okay, so I think I want to do one more coat. I used to really love the OPI gels, but after finding the Tracy nail gels, honestly, I feel like, because when I had first started out doing nails, um, I did start out with just regular polish. I didn't start out with gel. So just because I was on the cheaper side, I felt like starting out with gel was so expensive and not in my budget at the time. So with that being said, I just started with regular polish and I would do manicures and whatnot. I didn't do anything gel because honestly, okay, you guys, if you guys want a story time, let me know because this is kind of a funny story um, about going for my first interview after I got out of nail school. Oh my gosh, like that video, it's a funny video. So if you guys want a story time, go ahead and DM me or comment down below 
and I will get that out for you guys because honestly that that's a funny story in itself like now that I look back it was funny but at that time in my life it was so traumatic but yeah so um for a long time we didn't work with Joe um and so there's kind of a reason behind it it's actually it, that will be my story time video but so um I didn't really use gel at all for a really long time because I, every time, I mean, I had somebody who had given me gel and so I try to mess with it and do things like, or like work on clients and whatnot. But honestly, I do feel like it was, it was always a pain in the butt. Like I feel like I would always have people coming back complaining about it. It would pill, it would do this, it would do that. And so that's why I didn't like working with it until I started to figure out different ways and stuff I would have a client that would come in and I would tell her like okay I'm not going to charge you for any of the designs like but if I could try this on you you know you could get whatever you want and I would try to do work with gel on her and stuff so sometimes it was a hit or miss but I wouldn't charge her for any of the stones or nothing like that just because I did want to learn how to do that um let me find that that's not good so I think the top coat I'm going to be choosing is this Ultimate Finish Gel. If you guys could see it, honestly, I do feel like this blends a lot better than the one with the no wipe. The one with the no wipe, it almost, like, it looks so streaky. Like, I don't know if you guys could see that, but on camera, it's, like, not really picking it up because of the lighting. But I'll make sure to take pictures and insert pictures um, at the end of... The series just so you guys could see um because i want you guys to know like okay like and see the difference and and i'll even make sure to write next to each nail of what technique i used and what part it was in so if you guys want to refer back to it you guys could do that okay and the reason why i wanted to use this gel is because it is a little bit of a thicker gel and so, I don't know if you guys could tell, but they're, like, if you guys look at the shine, it doesn't look completely smooth. Like, it looks kind of bumpy, but it's because of the streaks in the nail. So, what this is going to help do is help smooth everything out. Um, that's what I find, like, if you feel like your nails aren't smooth like how you want, just go in with a thicker top coat, and it'll self-level itself. But just make sure not to cure it right away, right away, just because it's not going to end up, like, self Curing, uh, it won't self level. Sorry, I'm saying self curing. <laughs> and of course, there is another little thing in there. So, honestly, I think that this gel it might be a contender for um, actually doing. Like, I really like the way this came out. The first technique, um, I will probably have to screenshot it in the video and put it on um, the thing just because I do wish I would have actually took a video. But look, it, it actually looks really, really good. There's some spots that I do feel like I could have did a little bit better. But yeah, that is the other one. And this is with the dispersion layer, so... And then this gel top coat, the gel top coat that you use, it doesn't have to be a no wipe top coat. It, the no wipe top coat is just something that I prefer. You guys don't have to use that. And if you guys notice that in this video, the you didn't really see like the colors dragging together. Um, I hope you guys could see that in the clip, but I do want to confirm that it the the colors they did not drag together once I had did it. Um, so that was also very nice. If you guys have to apply another top coat, go ahead and do so. But because um, you could kind of see in this one that the shine, when you look at the shine of the nail, it should just be straight. Um, so like you see this little glow that or like the shine that's coming back from the polish. You want that to look straight. You don't want it to like look wavy and stuff just because that's when I feel like clients feel like their nails are like bumpy and whatnot. But yes, honestly, this is a contender. I think um, next time I do really want to work with this a little bit more. But this one, honestly, I am super impressed with. 
it came out a lot better than the no dispersion gel so i hope you guys really enjoy that okay so this is actually going to be a high this next one that i'm going to be showing you is actually going to be a hybrid nail and i am going to do a top coat all the way down And I've done this on clients too. This isn't something new that I am just trying today. Um, this is something that I use on clients so I know it will also work on your clients. So let me go ahead and do two coats of this and then after I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the light after. So if you guys wanna reuse your sponges, all you have to do is cut the tips of them off if you are doing like with me, like usually like sometimes if like the end ends of it bothers me, I'll end up just starting over and just cutting the tip of it off. But I won't use this on the same client just because it is porous and you are not able to sanitize that. So um, if you're using it on yourself, you could cut the tip off and go or use it like that. But or if you're using it on the same client, you could go ahead and do that. But I would not recommend doing it for um, like trying to save the sponge for other clients just because of bacteria and whatnot and it's not sanitary okay so I love this color of the gel um, let me go ahead and tell you guys the color of it just because it is a beautiful color um, oh I don't even know how to pronounce this let me show you guys what it's called this one it's called Triamsu for two Okay, so sometimes in between I like to roll the brush around in there just to make sure everything is separated and we don't have any of that streakiness. Okay, and so for gel, the reason why I like this method is because after you do this part, you could just clean up your cuticle area after you do this. Okay, that's going to go in for 30 seconds. So you're going to clean up your cuticle area. And I want to show you guys um, the reason why I do this is because it's faster, it's easier, cleanup is easier, it just, it, it makes things so much better. So, with that being said, I like to get an actually a regular polish, believe it or not. Um, but you guys are able to, if you guys have a regular polish, usually I keep black polish on hand and white polish on hand. Okay, and so since this has a dispersion layer, what you're going, going to want to do is you're going to want to wipe it down really, really good. So I have rubbing alcohol in my little spray bottle. And I am going to go ahead and wipe this baby down. I'm going to do it off camera just because I have to be super careful with my hands. Um, because I really don't want to get the alcohol on my hands just because if you guys have been following me for a while, you guys know I have eczema horrible on my hands and I should be wearing gloves with this, but I continue to torture myself. So, <laughs> all right. So make sure you shake up your polish. Make sure it's a fresh one. Don't use an old one just because, um, it will end up, if you use an old polish and it's super sticky, the parts of your sponge will start to fall apart. Like it will end up like sticking to the nail and the like chunks of the the sponge will fall out. Trust me, I know I dealt with that before. Um, trying to get away with using an old polish just because I forgot to get a new one. So, and I don't know if it's just me, you guys, but I feel like every time I get a polish, like, or a white polish, I always had to replace a white polish and a black polish a lot more than the other polishes. So I only put this up halfway and I am going to go ahead and sponge it on. You guys, this way is super, super quick, super quick. So you want to start from the bottom and work your way up. The reason being is because it helps get most of that, most of that color off. See, you guys could kind of see that the the sponge is actually coming off a little bit so even if you guys want to what you, another thing you could do is if you don't like the way it's blending let me zoom in a little bit more oh 
Okay, so if you guys don't like the way it's blending, you guys could even dab a little bit of the gel up at the top. So you guys have a little bit of area to blend. And this will help make it so much more seamless. And that's what you want. Like doing ombres, you don't want any harsh lines at all. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put this one in. And that's going to cure for 30 seconds. Okay, sorry if you guys hear my son. He is, of course, always right here with me. <laughs> so, um, he does, he just woke up from a nap. So, he's he was crying a little bit. So, if you guys hear that in the video, it's just because he was waking up from his nap time. Okay, so let me go ahead and paint this on once again and the only reason why i put it in the light is just so then that little area will cure so i didn't add any more white i'm just going back and blending okay, and i'll go ahead and put that in the light all right, so <laughs> this little guy, he just wants to be in my arms right now. He doesn't want to be run down. All right, you guys, so this is what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and apply a top coat. If you guys could see, that blend is so seamless. So this is one of my favorite ways to doing it because it is super pigmented. Um, all right, so I'm just going to put it upside down a little bit, and then after, I'll go ahead and put it in the light for the 30 seconds. Right, you guys so this is what it looks like super seamless no lines and just pretty okay so i really like this i do want to let you guys know that you guys should not have a problem with this it de also depends on the top coat that you use with polish and stuff just because not all top coats are able to go over the not all top coats are able to go over polish. So if you're using gel and you put it over polish, a lot of a majority of the times the polish or the top coat will crack on top of regular polish. Um, just because it's not completely dry or whatever um, reason or like it'll be like wet, so it's almost like soft. So you're putting something hard that will cure over this and it ends up just breaking it. So with that being said, um, it it does make it a little bit um, difficult trying to figure out the polishes to use for that. If you guys want me to do a video on how to put a gel polish over regular polish, let me know. Just because I know some people, they have trouble with it. And I know not everybody has, has a lot of money to be purchasing gels. So this was the way I started, was being able to put the gel over the regular polish. So and it saved me a lot of money at the beginning but i mean now that i'm able to purchase the gels um i do purchase the gels instead but yeah just because the price points of gel and regular polish the price points are different so so yeah you guys this method it is probably one of my favorites i haven't used it honestly in a while just because i got the tracy's nails in that's the one that i've been using a lot but now going back and redoing this video for you guys honestly makes me want to use this method a whole lot more just because it was so fast it only took a couple of times so i'll make sure to put the times down in the video like in one of the corners or whatever i'll time it on on the video before i edit everything just so you guys could see time wise just because i know that was something that i did in the first video and honestly it just it completely slipped my mind this video so yeah and let me show you guys these side by side i really like this method too um but it is something that you will have to get used to and find a really great brush that you won't have to like kind of like scribble with it like a fan brush you kind of have to separate the brushes so if i have this on the towel usually what i'll do is like scrape it back and forth like this so then it could help separate the bristles but I mean, I do want to try and find some brushes that people um, really, really like for ombres. So I could show you guys 
the best way to do it with a brush technique just because I have found some that I do want to give it a try and show you guys just because ombre it is a very very hard thing to do but i hope you guys learned something from this video and make sure to comment down below if you guys have anything else that you guys would like to mention to everybody else watching this video go ahead and comment down below just because i mean it is a nail community and we're here to help one another so don't forget to like comment share and subscribe to my channel and as usual i'll be back with more videos bye